What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of our Route Runner series. So without taking up much of your time, we're gonna dive in and analyze these maps and figure out how hard they are or how easy they are, and we're also gonna do some planning as well. So without further ado, here is the Alaska Maps. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. Alaska, the first icy region introduced in the game of SnowRunner. These maps can seem daunting at first, but with some knowledge of these areas, it will turn out to be a great experience. Before we jump into our very informal yet great informational video, I need to state that this is based upon an unmodded playthrough with all the vehicles that are in-game given by the SnowRunner developers. In this video, like the last video of Michigan, we'll cover the overall outlook for Alaska region, we'll cover the areas of concern and analysis, and then we'll cover the recommended routes. So without wasting any more time, let's go over the overall outlook for Alaska. The overall big picture for Alaska is as follows. The difficulty is easy to moderate, it's the best time to try different trucks and tire options, and it has the highest concentration of paved roads making easy routes throughout the maps. And it's a great map for learning and it's super fun. Next up, we're gonna talk about the areas of concern and data analysis portions, and then we're gonna move on to the recommended routes for all four maps in Alaska, starting with Northport. All right, so welcome to Northport, Alaska. This is the first map in the Alaska region which you start at, and this is the areas of concern and analysis portion of the video for this map. So right now you're seeing all these colors on the screen and you're seeing easy, moderate, and hard up in the right-hand corner. I'm gonna explain why I use these color codes real quick before we dive in here on the red portions. So for the green portions, they're areas of either low tipping risk, light terrain, or pavement, which is generally safe to travel. And so these are just lighter routes, uh, mostly pavement routes, and you really don't have trouble with them. For the yellow routes, these are areas of moderate risk of tipping, meteor, medium terrain difficulty, but they can be managed with proper gear manipulation, vehicle positioning, and attention to the vehicle's balance. And lastly, the red, red parts, these are areas of high risk of tipping and moderate to super hard terrain. These areas should be avoided if possible, but they can be traversed with caution, correct machinery, and attention to details. Okay, so with all that being said, we're gonna jump in and check out the red areas real quick, and then we'll dive over to the recommended routes for this map, Northport, Alaska. So we'll start here in the top left-hand corner. Um, this is an area here that has some super mud and snow. There's a little muddy area down here. Um, I generally try to avoid this whole route side right here when I'm actually traveling north. This part is just a patch of super snow right by the factory. Um, like I said, I generally do not travel past the factory here. If I'm traveling up this way, unless I have to, I will definitely cut over in a different direction. So let's move south here from the warehouse uh, down here where the BM-17 is actually sitting. It's right here. Uh, you rescue the BM-17. You can recover it, tow it back, or repair it whatever you wanna do, but this is where that truck is found. And in this area, there's this big strip of mud right here. And then this area is just really tough to get through. It's kind of boggy um, all the way through. There's also an upgrade here as well, but then it kind of shallows out as it comes near the trailer store in this area down here by the port. Uh, when you turn left here to go up to this, I think there's a watchtower up here. Usually you're going up here with the scout and this turns into like super snow. And yeah, it just takes a little bit. so. I wanted to throw that in there as well. Over here by the warehouse, uh, traversing through these ways, there's a couple tasks you need to do to cut through here. And there's just a big mud pit here that has winch points that you can get to as well. And most of these do have winch points you can get, get to, except for the ones that have the super snow. And then let's move over to the right here. If you're at the fuel station right here and you're moving uh, westbound, there's two routes that head north up to the drilling site. And one is a curvy route that is for smaller vehicles and the other is for you know larger vehicles, uh, probably towing large cargo or trailers. But this is a big patch of mud. There are winch points, but you will have to shift down. I'm basically sure of it, unless you're driving the ZIC 605R. 
Okay, moving up here, uh, we, we've seen this. This is a little bit of a, a mud pit right here, right before you dip up and come to the drilling site. It's not too big of a deal. You're just going to be slowed down, and yeah, you're probably going to have to use your lower gears. Down here is an area where there's a root, and this part is like a super snow, super mud area. I don't know why it's like this, but it just slows you down really, really bad, and things can get caught up on these roots that run through this mud. So just be careful in this area, and if you can, try to stick to the right because there is a telephone pole to winch yourself to to kind of make your progress. And lastly, this part right here is what a lot of people like to call the devil's mud. This is a huge mud strip that is just a huge bog and you will sink into it and there's only a few trucks that can actually just drive through this stuff. Um, my best solution here is just get to the left hand side of this mud pit and use the trees to winch yourself along and then it kind of shallows out here as you go down to the service site. Well, that was pretty short for the Northport area, guys. It's not super hard, but now we're gonna move on to the recommended routes for this map. Okay, so for recommended routes in Northport, right now you're seeing the, all these blue dots again and probably wondering what you're looking at. So we're gonna jump in and explain this real quick. We're gonna start at the garage and do our south routes first, and then we'll do the routes that are moving north. So from the garage, um, all of these roads are paved. If you come down here, you can go to the service hub, if you make this left here, this is where the devil's mud is. There's no way of really getting around it. If you're towing big cargo or moving this big trailer back here that you need to, you're just gonna have to traverse that way. But if you skirt to the left and winch yourself through, you definitely will get to lighter areas, light to moderate areas in here where you can just get to the service site. Now, if we do not make that left-hand turn, we continue down all the way on the paved surface to the trailer store. It's really easy. Uh, really fast way all these routes that are paved you can get there really really quick now if we come back up here to this little junction I mentioned this uh, mud pit that had roots and I do use this because this way uh, over here has um, some terrain that will get you slowed down a little bit so I'd rather just fly down this road and then make this shortcut over but just be aware, just stay to the right and use your winches to get through and low range um, gears. Now, if we continue here to the fuel station, log station, and all the way on, you'll go through a crick here and it's not that bad. You, If you have to downshift, you have to downshift, but you should generally have no issues. There's not a lot of very high moving terrain, so you should be able to get to the warehouse and the factory. And now you notice there's no routes going north because I generally just do not use this. Like I mentioned before, it's it's just not a route I would take. I'd rather take a faster route going this way um, to get over here. If I have to, I will, but normally I do not. So now if we come back to this little junction, there's two routes that run north. And I said before that this is for smaller trucks. You actually can get larger trucks through here, but if you're carrying long loads like semi-trailers or the wide flatbed trailers that are on the high saddle, I definitely would take this route here. It's a little bit more friendly, but it has deeper mud, but there are winch points to get you through. So just keep that in mind. And after that, you just move through and then through that little mud pit we talked about that you might have to downshift the ranges and then you get to the drilling site. Now, if we backtrack to this little junction here, you can go turn northbound and go through this little waterway here. It's not deep at all. It's kind of fun to go through. And up through here, you might have to downshift a little bit. You'll cross another water pit, and then you can move up here to the trailer store and the factory, and then you'll have your way to the sawmill as well, and then down to this warehouse. And this gets a little bit thick down here, so just keep that in mind as well. Now, let's move lastly to the garage again. Now, if we want to get to the White Valley Gateway or the Mountain River Gateway or all these areas up here that you can generally pull cargo from or just get fuel, it's pretty darn easy. All you have to do is do the contract to unlock this area. There's, this is blocked off by this pipeline. Uh, do that contract and you can freely flow north on this paved road. There might be a little rocks here, but you should be good to go. And there's a blockage that you have to clear. After that, you basically can just go down these routes pretty quickly. It's all paved. And yeah, you can move to this gateway here, the mountain river, the white valley, and to all these areas that you pick up cargo for these tasks and contracts. So guys, that is it for Northport. 
Uh, we're now going to jump to Mountain River and do the areas of concern and analysis. So with the first look at Mountain River, you can already see that there aren't a lot of red areas. There's only really one, but I want to cover another little yellow area that I believe is a tipping concern. So we'll jump in, look at that, and then we'll talk about our one red area. I also need to mention that Mountain River is a very small map, so you can get to one side of the map very easily through these roads that are green because they are all paved roads. So very quickly, very quick travel here. All right, so let's look here. Um, right by the service hub, if you come down this hill and make this right-hand turn, there's these routes that are on adjacent sides of this river here. And all these little routes along this river, I consider tipping concerns because I have turned over um, plenty of times with trucks like the Fleet Star, the GMC, etc. So uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight those before I talk about our lonely red part here. Uh, this part is the descending path that comes down through. Uh, it's very rocky. I believe there's some mud through here. It's kind of hard to traverse. I generally do not traverse it. I'll just go around. I'll either take these routes and just go slow to get to the warehouse. So, Or I'll just uh, cut through the fuel station and dive down straight to the warehouse. But anyways, that's really short sum up of the analysis portion for Mountain River. We're now going to jump to the recommended routes. So for our recommended routes for Mountain River, if I took our areas of analysis portion and just superimposed that image on top of this and made it so you can see through it, you basically would see all these dots would line up with the green portions. And this is why I use these, uh, these routes because if you notice, all these routes lead to major pickup points. The only point that actually does not lead there that I color coded different is right here which is this warehouse. And you do have to pick up some things from there, but not many, and you can just take your time and go through there. So I just have to say that Mountain River and the Alaska maps in general are the best maps to use the eight slot trailers because like I said in the beginning of the video, it has the highest concentration of paved roads of all the maps in the game. And that's why I love it. You can just move so fast and move so much cargo. So. Let's start with the Northport Gateway. That's where we came through. If we want to get to the Pedro Bay and all these areas through, we just basically taking these routes down. They're all paved roads. But this is also with the knowledge that you've cleared out all these obstacles because there are going to be some blockages that you need to address. And there are tasks and contracts to open up these roads to just freely drive through. But once you do, these are the routes you can take. So you can flow through the service hub to the gas station and then through to Pedro Bay very, very easily. This route probably takes, you know, two minutes to drive down if you're in a, a truck with a high range gearbox. From Pedro Bay, you can come down here to this warehouse or descend from the fuel station down to this warehouse, uh, this trailer store here to the sawmill to the service site. And then you can ascend up here to the White Valley Gateway. And then if you wanted to go find the uh, the mighty Cat 745C stuck back here, there's a task for it. You can just jump on this little path here with no, with no issues as well. So from the Northport Gate, you also can hit this fuel station here. There are two fuel stations on a very small map, so fuel isn't a concern here. And there's also two trailer stores as well. And you can also go to the trailer store here via paved um, path and then move to the White Valley Gateway. So guys, that is it. This is a super small map, very user friendly. Um, do not be afraid to use large uh, trailers like the eight slots to traverse these ways. These are perfect maps to use those. So now we're gonna jump over to White Valley and do the areas of concern and data analysis portion. For our areas of concern in our analysis portion of the White Valley map, you can see already that there aren't a lot of hard spots and the map is very long. It's actually the same size as the Island Lake map, but it's spun 90 degrees. So, and you can see there's a lot of green areas. These are basically paved routes and you just can kind of figure out in your head that you can move through this map pretty easily and pretty fluently as well. So. We'll talk about these red portions and then I'll add a little bit of these yellow ones at the end. So right here by these log stations, I've noticed log stations throughout the game have been getting thicker with mud. This is a thick piece of uh, area right here that I have got stuck in before I've dug myself down to the frame and had to pull myself out with another truck. 
but you can generally get through here. It's just going to be kind of slow paced, but just, just remember your low gears and differential locking. You should be okay. If you move north here, there's a big mud pit. I've used this in my P16 video and I think another video as well uh, moving through this. If you want to get through this, there are winch points. Uh, you can see the vegetation here. Just stay to the left-hand side and use your winch points to get through. Uh, then you can just progress northward. If you want to come out of the woods here uh, from the sawmill and you want to just shoot through to get to the fuel station or back to the garage, there is a little portion here of mud that is kind of hard to get through not too bad there is vegetation around you so winching is going to be an option there as well up here is just another little mud pit it's it's kind of deep there are winch points around you but i noticed that progress gets very slow and i've had to downshift a couple times with uh, some bigger trucks so that is the red portions and i just want to kind of highlight here back to what i was saying these yellow routes that are traveling northbound there was a couple points i did want to add red red spots but uh, I've traversed these areas with some of the worst trucks in the game and I didn't feel that they were too hard to get by so that's why I left them yellow and guys this is the analysis portion we're now going to jump over and do the recommended routes okay once again we're back with our blue dots and I just want to add if we superimpose our areas of concern and analysis you'll see that our blue dots are going to be laying on top of the green routes and I do this because there are only a few places that you actually have to branch off of those green routes to pick up cargo. One of them is the sawmill, the second is the log station, and the third is the drilling site, which you just have to take a little detour around this uh, mudded area right here. And that's basically it, guys. Uh, we'll start here at the garage. And if we wanna get to the aerodome, it's pretty simple. We'll just go uh, down the route and to the aerodome. And then we'll move eastbound and north. And then this is all paved, like I said. We can go north, go by all these um, sites, the factory, the trailer store. And then we can move northbound again to these gateways that are very close to each other. So it's very convenient. Now, if we want to move northwest, it's pretty easy. Come out of the garage, make a left. It's all paved. You can just go north and access all these little pickup sites here. Uh, it's not going to be very hard at all. Like I said, you can use eight slot trailers. This is probably the best place to use them um, in all regions is Alaska. And then if we want to go to this warehouse, we should make this left. It's all paved. There might be some rocks down here, but not too much of a concern. And that's how you get to the warehouse. And then if we want to move north as well from this junction, we go north and it joins up with the east, uh, the northeast travel way across this bridge and that is the recommended routes for our white valley portion guys we are going to jump to pedro bay and do our areas of concern and analysis so for our areas of concern and analysis portion for our last map in alaska which is pedro bay it's found from the gateway from mountain river this is another map that does not have a garage so you're gonna have to stage operations somewhere on the map that has fuel there's a fuel truck right here that you can stage operations uh, with different trucks but let's move over here and do this analysis of these few red areas on pedro bay so if we come from the mountain river gateway and we descend through here there's a big mud strip right here and this will slow you down with pretty much any any truck you have. Uh, there's only a few trucks in the game that can just plow through this. Um, you probably can guess them, but if you do not have an overpowered truck or a vehicle that can just move through this, there are winch points to your left-hand side or right-hand side um, that you can just winch to and progress your way through. And then the, it kind of shallows out here as you move down to the service hub. And the last red area, guys, is going to be this area here. It just kind of like drops off. I I feel like the terrain just goes from very smooth to boom, you're into some like deep mud snow area. So just be prepared for that. You actually can skirt around it to the left and dodge it and not go into the super deep parts of the mud. So everything else, these yellow parts, I would just say you can get through them. They might slow you down or they might cause a little bit of tipping here, but not too much to be concerned about. So anyway... We are going to move over to the recommended routes for Pedro Bay and see if we can close this out. 
To wrap up our final portion, which is Pedro Bay for the Alaska region, our recommended routes here are as follows. You can see my blue dots on the screen. I don't feel I need to really dive into all these little routes because you see that they go to every place that you need to pick up cargo and they're not super hard. This is not a really bumpy terrain as well, but I do want to mention a few areas before I conclude this segment. So right here from the stock loading portion, uh, if you drive through over this uh, ice area, just be careful of slipping, slipping over into the water. If you don't have a snorkel, you definitely will drown, but this is a nice shortcut to take, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. And then lastly, down here, uh, you move across this ice on the southern part of the map, but once you come up over this hump here and move down over, this area here is a pretty slant, it's pretty slanted and you can tip over very easily. I've done it and I've had to rescue myself in the drive uh, through multiple maps to get my truck flipped over again is not fun and I don't wish you the same. And then lastly, I do need to mention that the ANK Mark 38 is found up here. It has great stock tires, great stock power, and you can bring it back over here, refuel it and use it for the tasks in this region. And guys, that is it. That is the conclusion of the Alaska Review uh, Route Runner. If you guys need me to break down any more info, even on the green parts, the yellow parts, I stream on Saturdays or Sundays and maybe once during the weekdays. But if you come on my stream and ask me to break these down, I will stop what I'm doing and I'm so happy to help you uh, with any questions you have. So with that being said, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless and stay upright.